What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and in this video I'm gonna tell you six things you never knew about phones in prison. You know while locked up the prison phone could either be your best friend or your worst enemy. In certain cases it might be the only way you're able to keep in touch with your loved ones. Maybe your girlfriend or wife. Maybe your kids or your mother or father. Dad can you hear me? Dad I got locked up again. I know. I know. It's the 132nd time this year dad. But wait. Dad, wait, I need some money, Dad. Can you send me some money so I can order some ramen noodle soups and some sodas? Dad, Dad, are you there? Dad, don't hang up there. In other cases, maybe that prison phone is your worst enemy because you have no one to call. Maybe you've gotten locked up so many times that people just tend to give up on you. And that certainly happened to me before. Or maybe you do have someone you could call, such as a girlfriend, and every time you call, it seems like all you get is bad news, making the time that you have to spend locked up pretty much unbearable. Why every time I get on this phone with you, I can hear him in the background. I know he's there. You ain't gotta act like Jody ain't there. I can hear him. Hey, could you put him on the phone real quick? Maybe, maybe he'll send me some money for some commissary. Whether a good or a bad thing, those prison phones are there. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about some things pertaining to the proper etiquette, procedure, little tips and tricks and things to keep in mind anytime you're using a phone in prison. Now, real quick, before we get into these six things, I first want to share with you some cartoons that I drew pertaining to those phones while I was locked up. And I hope that this paints a little bit of a better picture of what using the phones in prison is oftentimes gonna be like. In a lot of cases, these phone areas are gonna be crowded. Guys are gonna be bunched up right there all together. And while you're at those phones using them yourself, you could oftentimes feel like you've got guys who are virtually sitting in your lap. But not only are these phone areas oftentimes gonna be super crowded, they're also gonna be super loud as well. Everybody's gonna be trying to talk over the next man in an effort to hear whoever it is that they're talking to. That was a pretty spot on reenactment of exactly what prison phone areas are going to be like. Oh, and real quick, this last cartoon showing a guy using a prison phone doesn't really deal with the actual prison phones as much as it deals with this one guy in particular and the girlfriend that he was calling from those phones. Because this wasn't just any old prison girlfriend this guy had. In fact, his girlfriend, while he was locked up, was actually his very own sister. Yeah, and you're going to see all sorts of really crazy stuff while in prison. But it's with mentioning all of that that let's go ahead and move on to these six crazy things that you never knew and very likely probably never knew that you wanted to know about these phones in prison. This first thing deals with some sort of proper hygiene or maybe even a safety precaution anytime you're using a phone while locked up. Now, you know, it's a good rule of thumb that nobody ever takes heed to. But anytime that you're getting ready to go use a prison phone, it's a really good idea to first brush your teeth. And again, nobody ever really does this. Nobody ever really goes and brushes their teeth before going and attempting to make a phone call. Now you may be wondering to yourself, Joe, why would anybody need to go brush their teeth before attempting to make a phone call? Well, the reason for that is pretty damn simple. Because a lot of times, whenever you pick up that receiver from that damn prison phone and go to put that up to your ear, and you got that little talk and receiving area right there next to your mouth and also right there next to your nose. Hey, look, guys, I'm really enjoying this conversation we're having about who's the best rapper alive, Little Xan, Little Pumper, 21 Savage. I do need to make a phone call real quick. I got to call my mom, see if she can send me some commissary money so I can protect my junies in here. But look, I'm going to get back to this real soon. You guys just keep talking about this because this is probably one of the most intellectual conversations I've ever heard in prison. It will oftentimes happen to you that when you do pick up that phone receiver, you are going to be absolutely knocked out by the smell of absolute, disgusting, toxic, just horrible breath stuck in that receiver right there. <laughs> And it's because of that that a lot of times you're going to be seeing guys using those prison phones with one of these right here over the receiver. I'm going to have to use a water bottle for my receiver because I don't have a phone. 
but a lot of times you're going to be seeing guys using the phone just like this with a sock over the receiver thinking that it's going to be this sock right here, some sort of a phone condom that's going to prevent whatever kind of aids are on that receiver right there from being transmitted into your body. Now, I'm not too sure how much of a safety precaution this really is, putting a sock over the phone like this, but let me just say this. There are a lot of germs in prison, more so than just whatever germs are gonna be stuck inside of that little talking part of the phone that you are never gonna be able to not smell anytime you do pick up the phone in prison, but, Putting a sock over the receiver like this, I mean, this could potentially, maybe, prevent you from catching any kind of germs like a sickness, maybe. Maybe somebody's got the flu. Maybe somebody's got like a really bad cold. They're coughing and sneezing into their hands all day, going and picking up that damn phone. Well, maybe this just might be enough for you to not get sick. I don't know. But that is most certainly the rationale and thinking behind putting a sock over the receiver of a phone in prison. A little prison phone condom so to speak. Moving on to the second crazy thing that you never knew about a prison phone. Anytime that you go and use one of these things, you definitely want to cower over that phone, hunker over it, and make sure you're keeping covered anything that you're dialing on that phone. Whether it be any time that you're dialing your inmate PIN number, which you'll oftentimes have to dial first before making a phone call, or the actual number that you're dialing. And the reason for this is because you never know who's watching who get on those phones. There could be somebody who's positioned right back there in perfect sight of the phones, just waiting and hoping that they can catch somebody who's dialing their PIN number, which is oftentimes associated with money that you have on the phone. And if a prisoner can get your inmate number, then they could potentially use that to call people themselves, burning up any type of money you might have on the phone. Or they might be able to get your girl's number and try to shoot their shot calling your girl like, hey, I know you don't know me, girl, but let me just tell you something. I'm locked up in here with your man. He asked me to call you and tell you that uh, he don't want to be with you no more. He actually moved on with an individual by the name of Peaches and told me that I could call you myself and see if we could possibly be friends. And by the way, everybody in here called me Big Jody, girl. Ain't no need to cry, girl. Big Jody here. Big Jody got you now. Keeping covered any numbers that you dial on that phone is an absolute necessity and precaution you're best to take while serving time because you never know who might be posted up in the background hoping they can capture some sort of a mental screenshot of that so that they could potentially use your number or your money on the phone for themselves. Number three on our list is phone lines, meaning who's in line to use those phones. You know, anytime that you go into a new housing unit or cell block, it's a good idea to just sit back and really observe how those phones operate before you just go running up there trying to use one of those phones yourself. A lot of times there might be tags on the phone saying such and such is using the phone at such and such time, followed by X, Y, and Z prisoner. And if you just go barging up there trying to grab that phone, not taking heed or paying attention to those phone lines, that could oftentimes mean some fighting type trouble for you because a lot of fights in prison take place because of the phones. And if you do end up in a housing unit or cell block where there's a lot of prisoners who use those phones and you want to be one of those prisoners who gets an opportunity to do so as well, well then you are next going to have to be what is referred to in prison as get in a car if you're so lucky to be able to do so because in some cases those phones are going to be ran by the different gangs in those housing units you might have a blood phone crypt phone ms13 phone ab phone and there's a good chance those phones could be completely tied up by gangs in those housing units and if that's the case you might have to pay one of those gangs just to be able to use the damn phone and again i have seen many a oh, many a fight take place behind a damn phone. Number four is making a three-way phone call. And what this is, is let's say there's a guy who doesn't have money on the phone or his girl just ain't putting no money on the phone for him, which oftentimes is a really bad sign of things to come between that guy and his girlfriend. Hey, why every time I gotta try to call you, girl, I gotta make a three-way to do so? What you mean you don't met somebody named Big Jody and they ain't here with me? How, how you meet this guy? If a prisoner doesn't have money on the phone, can't afford to put money on the phone, maybe his loved ones can't afford to put money on the phones because I gotta assure you, those phone calls, they ain't cheap at all. But if a guy is in this type of situation and he's still trying to make a phone call, one way that he could go about doing so is by trying to pay another prisoner who gets on the phones 
to make a three-way phone call for him. Now, one thing that you gotta keep in mind about making a three-way phone call while locked up, this is something that they don't want you doing at all. The prisons are trying to get all that money for them phone calls themselves. They ain't trying to see no other prisoners making phone calls for other prisoners, and they ain't getting none of that money. And oftentimes, part of that recorded message that's gonna play anytime that you make a phone call from prison, it's gonna say right then and there, if three-way calling is detected, the phone call is gonna be terminated, your account could be suspended for like up to three months, there's definitely some major risks involved trying to make a three-way call. But there are like little prison hacks that sometimes get around this, such as when the person clicks over to try to dial that other number, oftentimes prisoners might blow into the phone. <laughs> in an effort to try and beat whatever kind of technology they have that potentially detects these three-way calls. And a lot of times, blowing into the phones is a good way that you can beat the system. And you know, it really is a crazy thing to think about these little prison hacks that prisoners come up with in an effort to try to beat the system. Now real quick, I wanna throw in this little FYI about making a three-way call for another prisoner. This is really something that you gotta approach with caution. Because one, you don't really wanna do this in the first place. I mean, you run the risk of getting your phone account suspended or even terminated for trying to make these three-way calls. But even more worser than that is actually making a three-way call for another prisoner. Because if you make a call for this guy, then everybody else is gonna see this guy coming and taking the phone from you so that he can attempt to talk to his loved ones and everybody's gonna know right then and there you're making a three-way call for this guy. Other prisoners, they gonna see that. They gonna be coming and asking you for a three-way as well. Hey man, can you make a three-way for me? I'm trying to call my girl I ain't talked to her in 15 years, man. I'm just trying to make sure she's still riding with me, stick man. You know what I mean? Can you make that three-way for me? Hey, when you get on the phone next, I really need to talk to my girl. It's been 15 years, man. Can you call my dad for me? Me, I, I really need to get out of this prison. These guys, they are sabotaging my junies every single day. I really need a three-way. I haven't been able to talk to my father in two days, and it's been the worst excruciating two days of my life. Please make a three. Please, you've got to save my life. You're the only one who can help me. I've seen you make a three-way for this other guy. I need the three-way. I'm telling you, you make a three-way for one guy, everybody's going to be coming up to you asking you after that if you can make a call for them as well. Moving on to number five, and this one, it's another prison hack. You know, you may not know this, but the average cost of a collect call from prison is something like 15 to maybe even $20 a call. Well, you know, there's these companies that have been created that offer like cheaper phone calls from prison. So you might take a 15 to $20 phone call and through using these companies, it could be something like maybe $7, maybe $5. And the crazy thing about that is, is these companies, they're still ripping people off. You know, here in Virginia, and I'm sure this applies to a lot of other states as well, though I'm sure there's states where you can't do this. But here, you know, prisoners got so smart that they found a way, and I really don't want to give away too much with this, but prisoners found a way through using something very easy to use where they were getting 99 cent phone calls. And they were actually creating local numbers to the prison, giving those numbers to their loved ones, and then anytime that they would call their loved ones, their loved ones could be in California somewhere, it was still a 99 cent phone call. So imagine going from like $15 to $20 a phone call and then being able to go and call your loved ones for only $1 a call. And it's because of that that I say that these companies out here creating these numbers for loved ones, these companies that are designed specifically for getting calls from prison cheaper, they're probably doing this the same exact way. Getting those phone calls for $1 and in turn charging people like $5 to $7 per call. They making a killing of a people's loved ones being locked up and them trying to keep in contact with those people. Now I'm sure there are states where you know you can't use this little prison hack and get these one dollar phone calls. Um, but even there, you know these companies they really shouldn't be charging as much as they really charging. I mean that is absolute extortion. And you know just to throw this in here as well about creating these local numbers that get those prison phone calls down to one dollar. You know this was actually a hustle of mine that I had. Other guys had this hustle too because those individuals just like me had somebody out in the free world who could create these numbers for these people and we turn around and sell these numbers for like five dollars a pop we ain't charging five to seven dollars a phone call we're just charging like five dollars maybe ten at the very most and you could get you a 99 cent phone number uh, but you know i was just talking with dave this morning who comes home in like two weeks and i was asking him if this was still going on inside of the jail and he said that they are trying to cut this out. They are definitely trying to find a way to stop prisoners from being able to make these phone numbers and get these super cheap calls. So I really don't know how much longer all of that's going to be around for. Moving on to the sixth and final thing that you didn't know about phones in prison, this is called phishing. 
You know, there's certain places where you'll be locked up at where you don't have to first put in your inmate number. You can just pick up that receiver smelling that toxic death breath that's been stuck inside of that phone for probably like years. God, God, what the f***? Hey, who was using this phone and they brushed their teeth first? Uh, but there's certain places you'll be locked up at where you can just pick up that receiver, hit one, and then dial your number. And what some guys will do, I've seen this happen so many times, but in places just like that, you'll have these guys who will pick up those phones and then begin to fish. They'll hit one, hit that area code, and then just start punching in numbers and see what they can catch. And let me tell you, the craziest thing about this is I have actually seen guys succeed with this fishing. They might spend hours or days or even weeks on these phones just typing in random numbers. And sometimes these guys actually get people who will accept those collect call charges just to see who the hell is calling them from jail. And even crazier than all of that, I've even seen guys form relationships from just doing them a little prison fishing. Can you imagine a relationship being formed that way and then somebody asking those two people how they met? Well, I was locked up with nobody to talk to at all and I spent about two or three weeks just dialing random numbers in the phone and this 5,400 pound big block right here picked it up. It's been love ever since. Girl, you are so big. That's a pretty crazy thing. Just like everything else that I've discussed in this video pertaining to prison phones. Hey look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted nor ever find yourself locked up where you might have to learn about all six of these things we discussed in this video and make the most of every day. Peace!